Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the actual scientific reasons for why it seems that it's true that men are more likely to unfortunately die younger. And this is something that we've recently discovered and genetically confirmed. So let's talk a little bit more about this unusual discovery and welcome to What The Math. So good news ladies, you're definitely going to be living much longer than us. And this is something that's definitely scientific and has recently been shown in many different species. But let's take a step back and talk about what this all means. And first of all, if you were to look at the list of life expectancy around the world, you'll discover a very unusual pattern. In every single country, no matter what the culture is, no matter what the structure of the family is, and pretty much no matter any other factor, you'll discover that on average, women do live longer, approximately 5 years or so. And this seems to be true for countries where there is war, there is no war, or even in countries where it's technically kind of more or less equal in terms of gender equality. And although stereotypically we usually explain this because men tend to be risk takers and because men tend to be the ones going to war and essentially, well, you know, dying for the country, they're also more likely the ones to pick up unusual bad habits such as smoking, drinking, or any other risk taking behavior such as I guess walking in the forest with a backpack? Okay, definitely not the best stock footage I could find. Here's something better. Reckless, dangerous driving. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Men seem to take more risks. At least stereotypically speaking. And this is why we always thought maybe that's actually why the life expectancy is much lower. But various cross-generation and cross-culture studies keep finding almost the opposite. It doesn't seem to actually predict anything in regards to culture or behavior. Age does seem to be more genetic. And the scientists who published this paper relatively recently may have finally found the answer. It's a lot more genetic than we originally thought, and the answer is a lot simpler than we thought. It really has a lot more to do with genetic repairability, and thus ability to maintain healthier body. And to try to establish the relationship between genes and um, longevity, they actually investigated a lot of different animals. Some relatively similar to us, others a lot more primitive and a lot simpler. And the goal was really simple, to find a genetic relationship between longevity and what you would call genetically gender. Specifically, they wanted to see if the, for example, XX chromosomes that women get and XY chromosomes can actually correlate with the longevity. And as you can probably tell, yes, they can. And the reasons seem to be really, really simple. And we currently refer to this as the unguarded X chromosome hypothesis. The idea here is that in most species, there are usually either two similar chromosomes, like for example, for humans this would be XX, which would make it a female, or an X chromosome with a smaller Y chromosome, which would turn this into male. In other words, a lot of species seem to have this pattern. It's not always X and Y. For example, for chickens and other birds, the system is a little bit different. And there are also species where the actual gender and chromosomes um, are kind of reversed, whereas basically the male gets two chromosomes and the female gets one shorter and one longer one. But in a nutshell, this is the first step in trying to understand what's happening here. So when an animal has two same genes, it's a lot more likely to be able to repair it. And although generally our genes have a lot of ways of repairing themselves already, having two copies of a chromosome is yet another layer on top of that to help protect genetic code even more. And it seems that because women have two X genes, they're a lot less likely to suffer from various types of genetic disorders. And more specifically, from essentially aging in general. But to confirm this idea, just looking at humans was unfortunately not enough. There are still a lot of different other things, and here we're talking about cultural differences and gender rule differences that could technically explain the discrepancy between male and female age. And so to confirm this, the scientists behind this paper looked at over 200 different species, and they analyzed their genes as well. And this of course confirms the hypothesis. Every single animal that had two genes, even in those species where it's actually reverse roles, so basically males get two genes and females don't, the overall effects were quite similar or even more dramatic. A good example of this are things like moths and butterflies. Here the actual genders are reversed, so the male gets two genes, whereas the female moth usually gets one shorter and one longer. And male moths live much much longer than female moths. And it's exactly the same for birds. 
Here you can see that the rooster has ZZ gene and the chicken has ZW. And roosters do live much longer than chickens, even though their behavior for the most part is a lot more risk takey and aggressive. Roosters are the ones doing all the fighting. And the main explanation here is that even if you get some kind of a genetic disorder in one of your chromosomes, for females the other chromosome takes over and repairs all of the damage. For males, however, if they get damaged in either X or Y chromosome, that's kind of it. The genetic code will start getting a lot more errors and slowly deteriorate, causing a lot more various disorders. And when it comes to aggressive behavior as an explanation, there are certain species that actually have similar genes, but the opposite aggressive behavior. One example is spiders. Certain spiders do possess aggressive females and very docile males that basically are trying to survive. And in those cases, even though females are more aggressive and are more likely to take risks, they do seem to still live much longer. And unfortunately, there were no exceptions to this rule. So basically, having, I guess, an official backup to your gene is really important for longevity. Whereas for males that do only have one copy of their gene, unfortunately, this becomes a problem long term. And scarily enough for males, the difference in a lot of species was up to about 17% on average. In other words, if we were to consider average life to be 100 years, women would live approximately 17 years more. There were however some differences, like for example for moths and other species where the roles are reversed, the differences were not as dramatic. Female moths only lived about 7% shorter than males, whereas for other species the differences were even more dramatic, up to 21% difference. So this is where genetics really play a big role compared to other differences like for example gender roles. Even if women were the ones going to war, men would still very likely live much shorter. And furthermore, they also discovered that the actual lifespan differences were actually correlated with the length differences between the X and Y or other chromosomes. So the more difference there was, the more likely the females would live longer. Which is once again great news for women who can now start taking a lot more risks and will still live longer than us. Guys. But anyway, I'm not really jealous. It's just interesting. It's really, really interesting. And it's something you can read by yourself uh, from the link in the description below. So, in a nutshell, genetics do play a much bigger role in longevity than we thought. And this is, I guess, something that shouldn't really come as a surprise. We've always expected that. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about genetics and about yourself as well. But in some of the future videos, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about what we've discovered in the last few months. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about sciences, space, and, of course, biology, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. You can also support this channel on Patreon, and it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can buy the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well, and feel wonderful every day. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And by the way, all of the recent studies have also established that women make much better astronauts too. Which is, I guess, more unfortunate news for me. I don't think I'm cut out to be in space. And there's also a really big chance that women might be the first explorers and settlers on Mars. For other health-related reasons. But considering I get about 9% of viewership from women, I don't think they'll ever find out. Someone should tell them this wonderful news.